Hey everybody, we're back with uh, directly and indirectly proportional. And it's kind of an extension of what ind direct and indirect proportion are, so I'll be doing a little recap of those. It's uh, GCSE higher topic again. I want to say that this, uh, this PowerPoint has been stolen, procured, used from TES, from this lovely user here, John Gozo. I'll stick a link in the description, as usual. But it's ex excellent, and the, the worksheet, etc., I will be using in class as well. It's really very good. So, anyway, before I do this, I'll do a quick recap of what direct and indirect proportion are, is. So, I'll start with a little example, and I'll talk about the cost of lemonade. Is 1 euro 10, and up to complete the following table. L is the number of lemonade cans, and C is the cost. So, the cost of 1 lemonade can is 1 euro 10. To get the cost of 2 lemonade cans, what will that be? Well, it'll be twice. 110 which is 220. Similarly 3 will be 3 110s which is 330. How many cans cost not? Well no cans cost not. And the idea is that the price of the can of lemonade doesn't change no matter how many I buy here. So if I buy 20 cans it's 20 times 1, one euro 10 sorry. And I could draw that graph and if I plot the points in that graph with the cost in euros up to the left hand side and the number of lemonade cans down the right, I would get plot the points like this. And I would get a straight line graph. And this is direct proportion. Because it's the idea that as one thing gets bigger, the other thing gets bigger at the same rate. It's like the price of goods. Uh, and also the directly proportional if it goes through the, the origin here. So if I was working through the weak gradient, and I could use my y2 minus y1 x2 minus x1 thing to do but the general idea is the gradient is the change in y divided by the change in x so the change in y here is five and a half on top and it's five along the bottom so that i do that together i get 1.1 which also happens to be the price of our can of lemonade so the equation connecting c and l well the equation of a straight line is y equals mx plus c. It's of that form where m is the gradient. So we get y equals 1.1x. And the plus c would be where it crosses the y-axis. And we can see that it crosses the y-axis at naught. So the equation of the line will just be y equals 1.1l. Or in this case, the y is c and l is the x. So it's c equals 1.1l. We can use this equation to find C when L equals 150. We would substitute in the value of 150, and we would get 150 times 1.1, which is 165 euros. If I do another example, same kind of thing. Emily works part-time at a local store. Her wage is 5.50 an hour. H is the number of hours, and W is her weekly wage. If it works one hour, she earns 5.50. If she earns, works no hours, she earns nothing, unfortunately. That'd be a nice job. If she earned otherwise. For 4 hours it's going to be 4 550s which is 22 euros and 55 well we would divide that by 5 pound 50 and we would get 10 and again if we drew that graph we would find a straight line graph. We could work at the gradient again and we would find the gradient again would be this rate for 1 R which would be 5.5 and we could work out the equation it again passes through 0 on that y axis so you're just going to get W equals 5.5H. And again, we can say this is directly proportional because we have a straight line relationship that goes through the origin. And it's directly proportional. Okay, we could use, again, that equation to find out what H is when W equals 46.75. We could substitute that in. So with 46.75 equals 5.5H, we would divide one with the other and would get H to be 8.5 hours. Okay, so that's the general idea. So the weights W is directly proportional to the number of hours for H. And in both examples, we had the Y value, in this case W, and the H value related by the multiplier, this by a number really. In the case of the first one, it was the cost of the price of one can of drink. In the second example, it was the cost per hour or the price per hour or the money per hour she earned and so it's all it's going to be your y value equals your x value multiplied by some value and we'll call it k and k is called the constant constant proportion and the constant proportion is just a value it's however many times bigger 
the x value are smaller, the x times is than the y value. Okay. And the graph of w against h is a straight line through the origin if it's directly proportional. Gradient represents, represents the value per unit or the wage per hour or also the k. Sometimes we say w is directly proportional by h by using this notation here which says w varies directly to x or varies as h, sorry. W varies as h and we can see that it's a direct proportional relationship because they are both on the top line. That will make more sense in a second when we do some other examples. Okay. Well, the other way of writing that then, as we said before, is W equals KH. And the ratio of W divided by H, because if we move our H over the other side, equal to K, that'll be the same for all the values where that is true. So, before we do that, we're going to check to see if we can understand what direct proportion is, especially if I show you a graph. So which of the following graphs involve direct proportion? Right, so revenue is or is not directly proportional to the quantity produced. It is, and the reason is we have a straight line relationship that goes through the origin. Straight line through the origin, so it is directly proportional. What about the next one? Cost is directly proportional to distance travelled. Well, it is not. It is a straight line relationship, but it doesn't go through the origin. So we don't get a, a relationship of the value cost equals k miles, something like that. What about this one? Distances, distance travelled by a car at a constant speed. Distance is or is not directly proportional to time. It is because we've got a straight line through the origin. And this one, the temperature of a cup of tea, temperature is not directly proportional to time, mainly because it's not a straight line. If I give you a table, can you work out whether B is directly proportional to A? So is B directly proportional to A in the following table? If so, give the equation connecting B and A. So we have some values, and we would do our ratio for each, or B divided by A, and see if it's the same for each. And in this example, it is. So 4 divided by 1 gives me 4. 12 divided by 3 gives me 4. 16 divided by 4 gives me 4. And 40 divided by 10 gives me 4. That ratio is constant. So B is directly proportional to A, and B equals 4A. B directly proportional to A, that would be your Y value, that would be your X value. What about the next one? Is B directly proportional to A in the following table? If so, give the equation connecting B and A. Well, we would work out our ratio again. Check that the ratio B over A is the same for each pair of values. So the first one's not divided by not, kind of doesn't do anything. But we've got 2.5 divided by 1, 5 divided by 2, 15 divided by 6, and they all do give us, give us the values 2.5. Therefore, the ratio B over A is constant. B is directly proportional to A, and the equation is B equals 2.5A. What about the next one? We're going to check again that it's constant for us all. But you will see that the ratio is different the whole way along. So 2 divided by 1 gives me 2, 3 divided by 2 gives me 1.5, 6 divided by 3 gives me 2, and 10 divided by 4 gives me 2.5. It is not constant, and therefore is not directly proportional to A, and there is no, there is no uh, equation that can be made of it. Okay, here's one to try for yourself. In the following table, B is directly proportional to A. Find the equation connecting B and A, hence complete the table. So if B is directly proportional to A, B is equal to KA. So B is equal to some value multiplied by A. And if we substitute our values in that we know, i.e. B equal to 10.5 and A equal to 3, we will get 10.5 equals K times 3. Rearrange in that equation gives us K equal 10.5 divided by 3, which is 3.5, and we get the general equation to be B equals 3.5 A. They can then complete our table. So if we put an A equal to 5 in the equation, we get B equals 3.5A, which is 3.5 times 5 if I substitute the A in, which would give me 17.5. And similarly, if I substitute 28 in for B, like in the second one, I will get 28 equals 3.5A. Rearranging gives us A equals 28 divided by 3.5. Pop that in your calculator, and you will get it. Okay, now we're going to skip 
that one there. And I'm going to show you a slightly harder example. So in the following table, B is directly proportional to the square root of A. So B varies as A squared up here. Find the equation connecting B and A. Hence, complete the table. It's slightly different in that we still have the B equals K something relationship. But in this case, because B is directly proportional to A squared, it's B equals K A squared. And we follow along in the same way as we did before. So we'll substitute in our values for A and B. So if I put those in, I'll get 14 equals K times 2 squared. Remember, using bin mass, we'll have to square do our squared or indices values first. So 2 squared is 4. We rearrange, we'll get 14 over 4, which is 3.5. And, and we'll get our general form of our equation to be B equals 3.5 A squared. Remember that it's A squared, even at that stage. You might be used to doing B equals KA the whole time, but remember what the general form was at the start of the equation. So if we use that to complete the table, we use b equals 3.5a squared, and we're going to substitute in a equal to 5. So b equals 3.5a squared, we'll do 3.5 times 5 squared. If we put that into calculator, we'll get b equal to 87.5. Sorry. Similarly, if we do 61.74 for b, we're going to do 61.74 equals 3.5a squared. Rearranging, we'll get a squared equals that, which equals... 17.64 and then we can take the square root to give us 4.2 okay there's one to try for yourself pause the video b varies p versus q squared when p is 8 and q is 4 find the equation connecting p and q and hence find p when q equals 7 q when p equals 84.5 pause the video unpause and the answer is such k equals 0.5. Our general equation is p equals 0.5 q squared. When we substitute our values in, when q is 7, we will get p equal to 24.5. And when p is 84.5, we substitute in, we will get q to eventually be 13. Similarly, if you get a factory produced spheres used as garden ornaments, the weight w is directly proportional to the cube of its diameter d cm where b varies as a cubed write down the formula for w connecting w and d and get find that the value of k given that an ornament of diameter 30 centimeters weighs 9 kilograms give k as a fraction in its lowest terms similar as before the general equation is going to be w equals k and this time it's going to be d cubed and then we'd substitute in our values of w and d so the 9 is the weight and d is the diameter, which is 30. We would cube that, and we get 9 equals 27000k, or 27,000k. If we arrange that, we would get k equals 9 over 27,000, which you can simplify down your head to be 1 over 3,000. Okay, So our equation goes something like this. w equals 1 over 3,000d cubed which is cool. A factor produces spheres. Right, for safety reasons, an ornament cannot weigh more than 30 kilograms. Find the largest diameter of an ornament correct than your centimeter. So a wee bit more difficult than how we go about um, a quick an answer to this, but essentially, we're gonna just put in our weight to be 30. And if we do that and rearrange our equation, we'll bring our divided by 3,000 up to the other side becomes a multiply by 3,000 d cubed equals 30 times 3,000, which is 90,000. And if I take the cube root of that, I'll get 44.81404. Now, that is the largest diameter of an ornament. We've got to do it correct in our centimeter. So the largest it can be is 44, because if we go to 45, it's breaking the health and safety. So you've got to think about what your question is answer asking you, sorry. So if we went to 45, that would be breaking health and safety. So the largest it can be to the nearest centimetre is 44. That's direct proportion. Inverse proportion is similar, except it's the idea that as one thing gets bigger, 
the other gets smaller. Okay, so something like as time increases, battery power gets smaller in batteries. That would be uh, an example of, a, of an inverse relationship. The general idea where we had B equals Ka, if it's inversely proportional, it's going to be A equals K over B, or B equals K over A. So you will have still have the K in the top line, but you will have the alternate letter, or the ultimate value, on the bottom. Okay, so it's connected by that form. And k is still the constant of a proportion. And the product of a times b is constant. And we normally read a varies as 1 over b or varies as the inverse of b. And that's why when I said a varies as b, you can tell that it's a direct relationship just by the notation. We can tell that this is an inverse relationship just based on the relationship. And again, if it's A is inverse proportional to B squared, we would write it like that. So let's look at an example. Uh, a is inverse proportional to B. Find the equation connecting A and B and helps complete the table. So we know A is inverse proportional to B, so A equals K over B. We can substitute our values of A and B in for the two that we know. So when A equals 5, B equals 10. I can substitute those in, and I can rearrange. When I bring my divided by 10 over the other side, it becomes 5 times 10, and that gives me k equals 50, and my general equation is going to be a equals 50 divided by b, because k was is on the top in that little scenario. And I can complete the table. So my general equation is a equals 50 over b, so I can put in a equal to 8. And if I put a equal to 8 in, I will get 8 equals 50 over b. I can rearrange my equation to give me 8b equals 50, and hence b equals 50 over 8 to give me 6.25. Similarly, I can put b equal 4 in, get 50 divided by 4, and get 12.5. Here's one to try yourself. In an electrical circuit, the resistance R ohms is inversely proportional to the square of the current I amps. When the resistance is 4, the current flow is 6. Find the equation connecting R and I. You can pause and unpause now. If it's inversely inversely proportional to the square of I, then R equals K over I squared. And we can substitute our values of R and I in. If you've continued on, you will find that 4 equals K over 6 squared, which is 4 over 36. K equals 4 times 36. This is 144, and we'll find that R the equation connecting R and I is R equals 144 over I squared. Find the resistance when the current is 7 amps. Correct the three significant figures. And find the resistance when the current when the resistance is 3 ohms. Correct the three significant figures. Pause. And your answers are as follows. Using the basic equation, I can put in I equal to 7. Square it, I'll get 144 over 49. That'll give me 2.94 ohms to 3 significant figures. Similarly, I can put R equal to 3, rearrange, and I will get I squared equals 48, or I equals to 6.93. And that's inverse, inversely and directly proportional. Now, it funny, it com usually comes up at the end of the higher exams, uh, mainly because it's the language, I think, that, that's supposed to be putting you off, but the actual questions themselves are fairly straightforward. And if they come up, happy days. Because as long as you can identify that inversely and, and directly proportional mean to do this, then you're good to go. I'll see you in class on Tuesday. Until then, take it easy. Bye.